opportunity to appear today. The topic of this hearing is the next steps in human exploration to Mars and beyond. My recommendations to the Committee today are as follows. First, affirm that Mars is and will continue to be NASA's long-term goal for human exploration of space. Second, at all future milestones on the road to Mars, direct the agency to focus on activities that clearly serve the goal of landing humans on Mars, operating there, and returning them safely to Earth. Third, adopt cislunar space as the next milestone, whether ongoing studies show that it is possible to redirect a small asteroid there or not. Finally, dictate no milestones beyond cislunar space without first assuring ample funding to achieve them. I will address each of these in turn. The NASA Authorization Act of 2010 stated that a long-term objective for human exploration of space should be the eventual international exploration of Mars. I agree. In fact, in my view, Mars should be the long-term objective for human exploration of space, whether carried out internationally or by NASA alone. Alone among the planets, Mars is enough like Earth that we can imagine life once taking hold there. There is a vast and growing body of scientific knowledge that shows that the Martian surface once possessed many of the essential ingredients that are required for life. So sending human explorers to Mars to learn whether life ever emerged there is a goal that is worthy of a great national space agency. The most, the most useful milestones on the way to Mars are ones that, when met, help retire risks that will be faced on the way to the Martian surface and back. In the 1960s, we didn't go to the moon all at once. Instead, the capabilities to land humans on the surface of the moon and return them safely to Earth were built up systematically over a series of Mercury, Gemini, and early Apollo missions. I'm convinced that, even, that the even more challenging capabilities that will be necessary to achieve a similar goal at Mars must also be built up stepwise. And at each step along the way, it will be crucial to examine all of the activities that might be conducted critically and pare them down to the minimum necessary to assure progress towards Mars. Many of the most important capabilities that are going to be necessary for human missions to Mars can be developed in cislunar space. This work can be done far enough from Earth that progress towards a true deep space capability can be demonstrated, but close enough to Earth that a safe return in the event of an anomaly is facilitated. Moreover, given the performance capabilities of the Space Launch System and the Orion crew capsule, cislunar space is the only significant destination below low Earth orbit that can be reached for the foreseeable future. It is the sensible next step simply by process of illumination. And I reach this conclusion whether NASA's ongoing efforts to study redirection of a small asteroid to lunar orbit bear fruit or whether they do not. After cislunar space, the choice of the next milestone becomes more difficult. Personally, I am not persuaded that any physical destination like the lunar surface, an asteroid, or a Martian moon is truly necessary to get to Mars, function there effectively, and return safely. Others on this panel may disagree. But while we can debate the relative merits of such desti destinations, my most important message to this committee today is that I believe that no realistic step beyond cislunar space should or can be usefully identified right now. The fundamental barrier to making an intelligent choice today is that NASA is being asked to do too much with too little. This overtaxing of the agency is chronic, it is severe, and it is getting worse. It is manifested clearly even in NASA's near-term plans. To be more specific, the current development schedule for SLS and Orion calls for a flight rate that is so low that I believe it is a cause for serious concern. In a fiscal environment where even the next step to cislunar space cannot be carried out, at an adequate pace, I feel that for Congress to dictate any subsequent milestones today would be unwise. Unless NASA's funding is increased substantially, any attempt to specify milestones beyond cislunar space today would amount to an unfunded mandate. And if NASA is directed to do something it is not funded to do, I predict that the result will be wasted effort and a delay in achieving the ultimate goal of humans to Mars. I would like to conclude my opening remarks today on a positive note by pointing out that the solution to the mismatch between NASA's aspirations and its budget may be international partnerships. This was the case for establishment of a permanent Earth orbiting laboratory, and the International Space Station that resulted is a magnificent example of what space agencies can accomplish when they work together. If no major funding increase for NASA can be found, then I believe that the agency should aggressively seek out international partners for the human exploration of Mars. But if that happens, I feel that neither Congress nor the administration can expect to dictate what the next milestone after cislunar space should be unilaterally. Instead, that milestone will have to be negotiated fairly and equitably with those international partners. Again, thank you for the opportunity to appear today.